Welcome KBIC. Here today with us is a very special guest, the Assistant Secretary of Interior, Brian Newland. Brian, Who's tell you? us about your background. <laughs> well, uh, first, I, uh, President, I want to uh, thank you for having me up here to Keweenaw Bay. Uh, I, I'm a Bay Mills Indian Community member. Uh, I, I grew up down at Bay Mills, but I spent uh, so much of my childhood up here because three of my four grandparents are from uh, Keweenaw Bay and Launce. Uh, so uh, I'm actually related to the Schofield and Emory families, Ooh. my families. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, my uncle Samaski uh, lived over here in Ziba. My grandma grew up here in Ziba. Uh, we uh, had a lot of family events at the Whirligig. Um, <laughs> And uh, it, it just feels really good to be here. Wow, well, Vindigan, welcome. Welcome to our area. You've been very busy, <laughs> very busy uh, working at the interior there. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about um, how you guys are strengthening your relationships with the treaties through consultation. Well, we know that uh, one of the things that we're trying to do is make sure that other federal agencies understand that uh, the trust responsibility isn't just the BIA. The United States has the trust responsibility. That includes Congress, it includes the courts, and other federal agencies. And that that responsibility doesn't stop at the reservation boundary. And so other federal agencies have a responsibility to make sure that not only are they not violating treaties, but that they're upholding uh, the United States treaty commitments. Okay. All right. And I got some notes here, so I wanted to ask you, because this is of interest to us, um, you're well aware that um, infrastructure in Indian Country is just, you know, we always make jokes about the res roads and stuff, but what is the bipartisan <coughs> infrastructure law and how will this help uh, tribes in rural America? Well, the, the bipartisan infrastructure law um, has $13 billion in it for Indian Country um, from a number of federal agencies, including the Department of Transportation. Um, and uh, one of the things that we're doing with our funding uh, under the infrastructure law at the BIA is working with tribes to address climate change. Okay. Um, we had uh, almost a half billion dollars in funding to support uh, tribes efforts to address climate change and right now uh, we are in the process of awarding the largest set of grants in the history of the BIA uh, to tribes to help respond to climate change um, and uh, that, that can be anything from dealing with floods and wildfires to drought uh, to changing ecosystems um, and, uh, you know, really preparing tribal communities uh, for life here in the, you know, in the future of climate change. Right, right. That'll affect us. We're seeing that now, but most importantly, it'll be in the future. So that will sound like really great programs. And then my next question, <clears throat> this has always been a problem in Indian country, and I see that uh, there's the Not Invisible Act. Mm -hmm. How is that going to help our tribal communities? Well, uh, Secretary Deb Holland, when she was in Congress, worked to pass the Not Invisible Act. Okay. Uh, and what that did was it set up a commission of people from around the country to uh, share experiences, take testimony about uh, uh, violence in Indian country, and then provide recommendations uh, to us at the Department of the Interior. Okay. That, that commission just completed their work and submitted their recommendations to us within the last two weeks. And now we have 90 days to respond uh, and by uh, in our response, uh, sending a, a message to Congress about changes in the law that are needed to keep people safe in India country. Right. And maybe some of the funding uh, that's available because we know that violence against women, uh, girls, two-spirit people in India country um, is a, at a crisis level in a, in a lot of places and that's not acceptable. No, it's not. And so we're, um, you know, through the commission, uh, trying to come up with some recommendations on things we need to change to allow us to work with tribes to fix them. Great, great. And last, <clears throat> my last question, um, you had spoken with us and you had even mentioned that um, your grandparent had actually been in a boarding school. And tell us about the Federal Boarding School Initiative and your, um, your healing to, your Road to Healing Tour. Um, 
you know, a couple of years ago when uh, the discovery of the mass graves in Canada at the Kamloops School uh, happened, uh, you know, that sparked, I think, an awakening in Indian country and, and uh, it pushed us in the federal government to begin to account for our own role with boarding schools here in the United States. And so Secretary Holland, for the first time in the history of this country, um, undertook an initiative to report on the federal government's role in, in funding and operating these schools. And so we've issued uh, one report uh, with the very first official list of federal Indian boarding schools okay. where they were located, more than 400 across the country, including five in Michigan. Um, and coming up with recommendations on how to address the legacy impacts uh, from those boarding schools. And as part of this initiative, we also went around the country uh, 12 different stops uh, to hear from people about their experience at boarding school and their family's experience at boarding school. And it was really hard. It was really hard to sit and hear people share uh, the worst experiences of their lives. And to sit there, not just as a Ojibwe person, uh, but as a federal official, and know that these awful things were done in, in, in the name of this country. Uh, but you know, one of the, the one of the good things is that uh, about our country is the potential for change. Uh, and Secretary Holland, now being the first Native Cabinet Secretary ever, um, had under and also under President Biden, has begun the work to account for the boarding schools, to tell the truth about it, and to uh, work with Indian Country to address uh, the impacts of that trauma. We know flowed through generations. So even if I didn't go to boarding school, my, my great grandmother went here to St. Joseph's, uh, you know, my family is still affected by her experience. Right. And that's that's true across Indian country. And so we're working through this initiative to address that and try to heal from it. Okay. All right, well, thank you. Uh, Secretary Newland met with us and we talked about mining resources or uh, mining issues, protection of our natural resources. We talked about ICWA, Title IV, how to continue to strengthen and protect our children in Indian country, uh, veteran issues, the boarding school issues. So we had very good dialogue. We actually talked about a few additional things. So I just uh, want to say miigwech, Brian, for coming here or coming, coming into, uh, you have ties to our homeland and um, which coming back to an area of your ancestors, part of your ancestry, yeah. and you've got Indian country is big, Ojibwe country is big, so we just want to, on behalf of our community and our council, miigwech for coming here. Miigwech for having me. It's just really great to be here, uh, especially this time of year, uh, to be home, uh, back in the UP. You know what, it's yeah. God's country. Yes, it God's is God's country, country. <laughs> <laughs> and I tell everybody that, so. I'm, I'm gonna uh, enjoy my hilltop sweet roll. I'm gonna get some pasties to bring home for dinner tonight right. uh, with my family back in DC when I uh, catch my flight later. Right. It's been great. All right, thank you. Thank All right.